In this problem, we have to integrate the sine of nx with respect to x from 0 to pi, and we have to see if we can find a pattern uh, for values of n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So when you integrate the sine of nx, you end up getting the negative cosine of nx divided by n. So because we have to divide by n, let's take a look at the case when n equals 0 first. So if n equals 0, we have the definite integral from 0 to pi of the sine of 0x dx. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of sine of 0. And sine of 0 is 0. So we have 0 dx. Uh, when you integrate 0, you get a constant. So this is a constant. And we're going from 0 to pi. When you plug in the pi, um, there's nothing to plug it into. So you just get c. You subtract and you plug in the 0. So you get c. c minus c is 0. So when n equals 0, we get an answer of 0. Now let's look at the case when n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. So we have the definite integral from 0 to pi of the sine of nx dx. So when we integrate sine, we get cosine, but because we have sine of n, uh, we get negative cosine, but because we have sine of nx, we have to divide by n. So this is negative cosine of nx divided by n. And we're going from 0 to pi. And you can check this via differentiation. If you differentiate the cosine of nx, you have to use the chain rule. You would get negative sine x times the derivative of the inside, which is n. And the n's would cancel, and the negatives would, be, negatives would become positive, and you would end up with this integrand here. Okay, so now we plug in the pi. So this will be, let me write it like this. This would be cosine of n pi minus cosine of 0. So this is equal to negative 1 over n. And then cosine of m pi is negative 1 to the n. This is minus 1. If you're not clear on this, let me briefly explain it over here. Um, let's look at all the possible values of n for cosine n pi. Starting with 1, cosine of pi, that's going to be negative 1. If n is 2, we get cosine of 2 pi, that's going to be 1. Right On the unit circle, cosine is the x-coordinate. So if we're here, it's going to be negative 1. And if we're here, it's going to be 1. So this is 0, 2 pi, etc. This is pi, 3 pi, etc. So if n is 3, we're back at where pi is because we get cosine of 3 pi. So we also get negative 1. If n is 4, we get um, cosine of uh, 4 pi, which is 1. So uh, cosine of n pi would fit the formula negative 1 to the n. Because whenever um, n is odd, uh, you're going to get negative 1. You see n is odd, you get negative 1. n is odd, you get negative 1. Whenever n is even, you get 1. Here n is even, you get 1. Here n is even, you get 1. So that fits negative 1 to the n. Okay, let's see if we can break this down even further. So we have that our answer is 0 if n is 0. And our answer is this uh, for all other values of positive integers n. So let's break it down completely and see if we can do better. Because I think we can. So when n is 0, we know the answer is 0. When n is 1, we have negative 1 over 1, and then we plug in a 1 here. So negative 1 to an odd power is negative, so it's negative 1 minus 1. So we get negative 1 times negative 2. So we just get uh, 2. Okay. When n is equal to 2, we get uh, negative 1 over 
2. And then we get 1 minus 1, so that's going to be 0. So notice that so far when n is even, uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be 0. When n is 3, we get 1 over 3. And then we get uh, negative 1 minus 1. So that's going to give us uh, 1 over 3. Oops, there's a negative there. Times negative 2. That's going to give us uh, 2 over 3. When n is 4, um, this is going to go away again, so it's 0. When n is 5, we're going to get negative 1 over 5. And again, we'll end up subtracting. Right? We'll end up subtracting here, so it'll be um, it'll be negative 1 minus 1. So it'll just be uh, 2 over 5. So it looks like there's a pattern here. Looks like there's a pattern. So when n is 1, we can write 2 as 2 over 1. When n is 3, we have 2 over 3. When n is 5, we have 2 over 5. So when n is odd, we have 2 over n. So the final answer to this problem would be the following. The definite integral from 0 to pi of the sine of nx dx is equal to, it's going to be 0 if n is even. And if n is odd, it's going to be just 2 over n if n is odd. Kind of a uh, tricky problem. Uh, it would have been a lot easier to um, stop way up here, right? I mean, just right here, just call it quits and <laughs> done. But I think the problem wants us to, to go all the way and actually find a pattern, you know, in terms of like n and simplify. So uh, I hope this video has been helpful.